Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk. I am Jigao from University of Virginia. Today, I will present our paper, Polynomial Time Targeted Attack on Coin Tossing for Any Number of Corruptions. This is a joint work with Amit et Sami, Saeed Mahalujifar, and Muhammad Mahamudi. Let's start. A collective coin tossing protocol is a protocol when several parties try to decide a bit by each sending out a message. In the figure, we show that there are n parties. Each of them send out a message, omega 1, omega 2, to omega n. And the protocol takes all these n messages and returns the output bit b. The output bit b is either 0 or 1, and it can be biased. That is, it is not always 50-50, but can be any probability mu. Note that there is also a more general case when the parties can send more than one message. But in our research, we focus on the simple case, which we will see is already very general and have a lot of applications. Now, imagine an adversary want to bias the output to the result it desires in the figure B equals one. The adversary is allowed to make K replacements. The budget K is a parameter of the adversary. The adversary in the figure chose to modify the messages omega one and omega n. And with such modification, the adversary successfully increased the probability that output b equals one to mu prime. We call this type of attack as targeted attack because it targeted to increase a specific output b equals one. On the other hand, a targeted attack just won't mess up with the output but doesn't care which direction it goes. So clearly targeted attack is more powerful. Here we give a formal definition of our setting. In our protocol pi, we have n parties p1 to pn, and at ROM i, the party pi sends out a single message omega i that can depend on previous messages. The protocol returns a bit b, which is a function over all the messages. For our adversary, we consider a targeted k-replacing adversary that aims to increase the probability that b equals 1, which of course is symmetric to increase the probability b equals 0. The adversary at each round sees the, all the previous messages omega 1 to omega i minus 1 and also the current message omega i. The adversary can then replace omega i with omega i prime, which is why we call this replacing adversary. Such adversary is also called strong adaptive adversary by Goldmoss et al. The adversary has a budget k, which is the total number of replacements allowed. As an illustration, our k replacing adversary act like the following. The adversary want to bias the output to one. So at round one, party one send out the message omega one and the adversary decide whether to replace it or not. In this case, adversary choose to replace the message to omega one prime. At round two, party two send out message omega two, which could depend on omega one and ad adversary choose whether to replace it. In this case, adversary does not make replacement. And finally, at round n, party n sends out a message, which could depend on all the previous messages. The adversary then successfully biased the output b to 1. This is an online adversary, which is the focus of this work. On the contrary, an offline adversary sees all the messages at first and then make changes. So recall that b prime is the output after adversary. Let mu prime be the probability b prime equals one, and mu be the probability of b equals one. We define an adversary scheme to be mu prime minus mu. That is, how much adversary increases the probability that the output becomes one. We can now ask the question: Assuming we have an n mu particle pi, where the number of parties is n, and the original probability of b equals one before adversary is mu. Then with a fixed budget k, how much gain can the adversary achieve? We consider two cases. In the first case, message is uniform binary. For each omega i, probability of omega i equals zero and omega i equals one are both 50%. On the second case, the message is arbitrarily long. Clearly, the first one is a special case of the second one. These two cases are connected, but also very different. Now, let's see what our question means by going over a simple protocol, that is threshold protocol. The output bit of the protocol follows the threshold majority function, that is, 
the output of the protocol equals one if and only if the summation of all the messages omega i is larger than t. We suppose it takes only uniform binary messages and the number of all the inputs whose summation of omega i larger than t is the size of a humming ball. Now, this simple protocol is robust. Why? Because with budget k, the summation can only change by k. So adversary can succeed if, if the summation is larger than t minus k, which is a bigger humming ball. This holds even if the adversary is offline and can do the changes at the end. We will come back to it later. Now our goal is to answer the question that whether the threshold protocol is optimal and can the adversary runs online in polynomial time. In this paper, we show that in the case of uniform binary messages, the threshold protocol is indeed optimal. To show that, let beta Tn be the probability of B equals one for the threshold T on the n-party setting. For mu equals to beta Tn, a polynomial time online attack can achieve mu prime equals to beta T minus Kn on any protocol, which matches the majority's upper bound even for offline attacks. And then for the case with any message length, the threshold is optimal up to a constant for mu equals to omega one. We have a polynomial time attack that achieves mu prime equals to mu plus omega mu k over square root of n. Here is an outline of this talk. Before we go to the details of our method, let me introduce some related work and also applications of our method. On the uniform binary messages, Lichtenstein et al. 1989 shows that threshold functions are optimal, that an attack can achieve probability beta t minus k and minus k on their weaker adversary model that cannot see the message before making changes. Our attack, on the other hand, can see the current message before making replacements, which is much stronger. Also, we achieve the bound beta t minus kn, which is larger compared to Lichtenstein paper. On the same adversary, Kalai et al. 2018 proposed a polynomial time attack that works for large k, which is omega root n, and it's optimal up to a constant. On arbitrary message lens, Mahalujifa, Mahmoudi, out 90, and at Sami et al. So that 2020 proposed polynomial time adversary that with budget k equals to omega root n can increase the probability to approximately one. However, their result only works for large k, where what we want is to have universal solution on every k. Interestingly, Chris' work has built a connection between the targeted attacks on coin tossing protocols and targeted poisoning attack on machine learning model. In the two figures below, I will show why the targeted poisoning attack can be reduced to an attack defined on coin tossing. The left figure is the same figure as the attack on the coin tossing, and the right figure, although looks similar, is a learning problem. A machine learner takes a data set as input and returns a model. Suppose the data set has n examples, an adversary inspects it and makes some modifications and makes the learner produce a bad model. We can then use the attack defined on the left scenario to write by defining a collective coin tossing protocol based on the learner and let b equals one if the learner outputs a bad model. Then an attack defined on the left figure can be directly applied to the right figure. Our attack on the coin tossing with any budget can then translate to targeting the poisoning attack on machine learning models of the same budget. Now we briefly talk about the connection to the isoparametric problem in product space under Hamming distance. In the isoparametric problem, what we want is to find a set with fixed size that has minimum boundary. See the figure on the right side? Suppose we have a set marked red that is a subset of this green set. I define the boundary as a set of all the elements that has Hamming distance at most k with elements in the red set. Then the isoparametric problem asks the question, what shape of the red set has the minimum boundary? Boundary is shown as the brown region in the figure. We now connect the coin tossing with the isoparametric problem. On the left side, we see the coin tossing protocol sometimes returns one and sometimes returns zero. On the right side, 
we define an element as an input, which is a combination of n messages. Roughly speaking, we can think there are three types of the inputs. There are good ones that lead to b equals to zero, which is showing the large green circle. And there are also inputs that lead to output one, represented in the red circle. There are vulnerable ones that originally output zero, but they are too close to the case output one. So an adversary can make them bad with at most k replacements. In the figure, the brown circle is the set of vulnerable ones. As should be clear from the picture, we are asking what is the probability being red or brown, given we already have the probability being red is a given probability mu. Proving lower bound of the probability measure of the brown set is exactly what we want, proving a lower bound on addresses gain. Now, in the case of previous methods from two previous papers, the budget is large and the probability of vulnerable brown circle becomes close to one. Essentially, they are asking how much inputs are not close to the bad inputs. Then by the concentration of measure, the whole measure space is concentrated, that is close to the bad inputs. Therefore, only an negligible fraction of the space are still far away from the bad inputs. Then the polynomial time attacks proposed by those works provide a computational version of the concentration of measure. So we can call their result computational concentration. On the other hand, for the scenario we work on, the budget can be small and the probability of the vulnerable brown circle can also be small. In the offline setting, when the adversary gets to see all the messages, our problem becomes exactly the same with the isoparametric problem. But we want to pursue an online algorithm, which is polynomial time and achieve the same bound, which further gives a computational version of the isoparametric inequality. So we can call our goal computational isoparametric. So this is the major difference between our work and previous works. In the next part, we will talk about the attack on any message lens. We first give a high level description of our attack. Suppose adversary is defined with a parameter lambda, which we will explain later, and also a budget K. Adversary's strategy is to make a replacement if first have not make already K replacements, and the second, the gain is large. Namely, at round i plus one, let alpha be the probability b equals one. That is defined over all the sequences follow this omega one to the omega i plus one. And we let alpha prime be the maximum possible probability among all the possible messages at this step omega star i plus one, which is also defined over all the sequences follow that. So if alpha prime minus alpha larger or equal to lambda, and the adversary has not made k replacements yet, the adversary will replace omega i plus one to omega star i plus one. At the high level, the attack is similar to the attack in Mahaluji from Mahamudi R19 at Sami et al. Soda 2020, but also with key differences. The main difference is that these two papers use an analysis that only applies to large k which is omega root n. What we want is to find a universal solution, especially for small k. There are also in, in the Mahalojifa Mahamudi R19 paper, they suppose alpha bar is the probability b equals one before the current step. Then if alpha bar minus alpha larger or equal to lambda, it will reset the input message. Otherwise, if alpha prime minus alpha is larger or equal to lambda, it will do the replacement. So our attack has one fewer case and leads to a sharper bound even for large k. For the SME et al paper, they use the ratio alpha prime over alpha instead of alpha prime minus alpha, which leads to a sharper bound. But it only works for large k, omega root n. So why all these papers all choose large k? There's a reason behind that. These three papers share a similar core, which makes them all rely on this omega root n budget. Their analysis goes through the following two steps. First, they show a specific attack with unlimited budget can fix output one. Second, by relying the first step, they show that this attack's budget is indeed theta root n. So it can be shown that fixing the output one could require this budget root n. So you cannot improve with the same analysis. We need a new analysis. To show how our attack works, 
we start on the case when k equals one. Note that even k equals one is previously an open question. We can then separate all the inputs into two cases. The first one is the case when the adversary with budget one make replacements, and the second is the adversary with budget one doesn't make a replacement. We can show that in both cases, essentially the adversary will have large gain. We first show that each replacement made by this one replacing attack immediately achieves this lambda gain. See the path marked by orange, which is originally getting out to zero, but adversary make a replacement to divert it to this new path marked with red. We know that adversary only make replacement when the probability of outputting one is increased by lambda. So suppose the probability of going on the original path is p, the adversary has at least gains p times lambda. Namely, if let p1 be the probability of this one replacing attack happens, and the mu1 be the expectation of b equals one after one replacing attack, we then have mu1 larger or equal to mu plus p1 times lambda. So we only need to lower bound this p1 here. However, now we see that when p1 is small, the adversary still get large probability that b, b prime equals one. Now see this example, the green path does not change. So k equals one doesn't change. And because k equals to infinity is based on this k equals one attack, it already have the same result and it doesn't make any change. From a previous literature, we know that when k equals infinity, the probability should go close to one, which means for this part, when k equals one, it already closed one. Namely, let this ERR function be the arrow of the infinity replacing attack. Then we have P1 larger or equal to one minus mu minus this ERR function. Then combining with the case one, we have mu one larger or equal to mu plus lambda times one minus mu minus this error term. And finally, we let lambda be the theta mu over root n, we get this bias omega mu over root n. Now we want to extend our k equals one result to any k. The first approach is to recursively apply the analysis that we can apply the one replacing attack for k times. However, it is only polynomial time when k equals to O1. Now there's approach two that achieves slightly weaker but polynomial time bound is to carefully applying induction. Let the attack be the infinity replacing attack that is cut after k replacements. A generalization of the idea of one replacing attack show that mu k is larger or equal to mu k minus one plus lambda times one minus mu k minus one times this error term. So solving this recursion above gives this desired bound and the attack can be made polynomial time using the same trick as in Mahalojifa Mahamudi out 19 paper. That concludes the first case on arbitrary lens messages. We now turn on to the second case when the attack is applied to uniform binary messages. We start by recalling the result on the threshold functions Assume each message omega i is uniform binary. The output bit of the protocol follows the threshold majority function. That is, the output of the protocol equals one if and only if the summation of all the messages omega i is larger than t. Now, let beta t be the probability of that summation larger than t. A k replacing offline adversary, which by offline we mean that the adversary sees all the messages and then make replacements, can only achieve beta t minus k, which is the size of a larger Hamming ball. We ask a question, how much gain can an online adversary achieve? What we care is the online expansion function, which is the optimal gain under the best possible k replacing attack. Similarly, we can define an offline expansion function, which is the optimal gain of the offline adversary. The op online expansion function can be computed by induction on n, and the corresponding optimal attack can also be implemented in polynomial time if one is given oracle access to the values of the online expansion function, but we do not have it. It is because the online expansion function is in general very hard to compute. So we propose a piecewise linear function L. The L function is equal to the offline expansion function at each Hamming ball sizes beta t. And otherwise it is linearly extended on all the other points. This piecewise linear function is inspired by a similar function from Horace Gagne et al. 2021 paper, but the induction of proving the lower bound is quite different in our setting. Here is a figure of the three functions we described. In the figure, x-axis is the mu value ranges from zero to one, 
the y-axis is the adversary's maximum gain, the blue curve is the online expansion, which is what we want to bound, and the red curve is the online expansion, which is easy to solve because we know that threshold is optimal. Then we define this L function as the green curve here, which is the lower bound of the red curve. At a high level, there exists a recursive relation on both online expansion and L function, and because of concavity, we then show that L is also a lower bound for the blue curve online expansion. And because the L function achieves the same result on each timing board sizes with red curve, the online expansion function also achieves this gain. This leads to a conclusion that both L and online expansion is off by at most one step compared to the online offline expansion. That is, the online adversary with one more budget can achieve at least the same result as the offline adversary with the same budget. Then we conclude that the threshold is optimal in this case. Recall that the optimal attack can be implemented in the polynomial time if one is given oracle access to the values of online expansion, but we do not have access to that. To achieve a polynomial time attack, we define an adversary that approximates and uses L instead of online expansion mu. The induction proof still shows that using L instead of online expansion works. That finish our second result. Finally, we summarize our findings in conclusion. For uniform binary protocols, threshold majority protocol is optimal for online and offline key replacing attacks and for any key. And this result can be viewed as a computational version of Harper's isoparametric inequality. For protocols with any message length, the majority protocol is still optimal up to a constant factor. This result can be used to obtain generic targeted poisoning attacks on learners with small budget k, where n is the size of the training set. Thank you. I appreciate any questions and comments from you.